So we just got an email from Seagate about our hard drive and they said, Dear Value Customer, we regret to inform you that we were unsuccessful in recovering your data for case number blah blah blah. We will be shipping your original media back to you in case you prefer to get a second opinion. A Seagate Recovery Service representative will be reaching out to you to provide you details about your case. So that's where we're at. Um, hopefully we can find somebody that's, I guess, better at this, because that's, that's crazy. That's the manufacturer. That should be the best option. We've been waiting so long, and I'm just thinking, oh, they just have a long queue, and they'll get to us, and it'll be fine. And I'm just... Okay, it's seriously so... like hit, hitting me in waves, like, oh, I don't have this now. I don't have... Like, that's... I'm not willing to In addition, that. as a courtesy, we will be sending you any data that we were able to recover at no additional cost to you whatever that means. I don't know what data, maybe they did recover something. I don't know. Maybe they got photos, who knows? I don't know. I mean, yeah, because every single photo of Peter and I that we took with that camera, that's what we mainly used for our selfies. Like, <laughs> and I didn't back those up and I'm kicking myself because photos wouldn't have taken up any space. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. But uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully when they contact us, hopefully they'll contact us soon. Like, like, hey, how about a call right now? I mean, it's six o'clock. They're probably done with their work day. When do they email They're that? They're Kentucky, so there's central time, I think. They just email you that? Yeah, I just got it. Hey, hey, hey. So yeah, update our page here. <laughs> oh, Recovery attempt goodness. complete. Recovery unsuccessful. Return your media is being prepared for return shipping. Guys, have a second backup of everything. I mean, it's not like, you know, we <laughs> dropped it or something and then it stopped working. Yeah. It was seriously doing a backup. I'm so upset right now. All right, so that's where we're at. I will figure out how to explain the days that we missed and... Uh, we don't know yet. You, you, we're honestly, we're going to get some more opinions. It's got to be a way. It's got to be a way. Ah, I know, but I need to like get videos out or something. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. We will do every option to try to recover this data. Looking up other options now. Twenty just looking at. They had a video that just said they have ninety-seven percent success. That sounds pretty good to me. Let's do it. Good morning. Um, we're gonna try to call. Um, Seagate now and see what is up with my drive. We've looked at several other options. We know one of two places we want to send it next. We'll be calling both of them. We'll see which one has more confidence with fixing the head of the hard drive. So it can read it. <sighs> but it's right too much of the disk. Yeah. But both of them said, here's how the process works. We will give you a call when we receive your drive, and then after we look at it, we will give you another call and let you know how much it's going to cost. And when they do recover, then they give us another call. Like all these phone calls, not just like some email says some copy and paste, <laughs> not helpful text. I mean, come on, Seagate. <laughs> and they sent it right before the end of their work day. Call before you send an email like that. Uh, one of our people will be in touch with you shortly. But we haven't got a phone call, and it's 10.30 a.m. East Coast time right now. It's, we're... But what I want to know is what happened last night in your sleep. Oh yeah, last night I totally dreamed about it too. <laughs> Trying to call and yesterday we we're like, okay, well maybe we're calling after hours so that's why they're just hanging up on us. It's super annoying. I mean, they don't even tell you, oh, here's our business hours, here's when you call us. Need further support? Contact Recovering Services at this email or this phone number. I did email them last night at that. I just replied to the email and they didn't respond yet. So then we tried calling multiple times, and even now at 10.45 a.m., and here's the message we get. You have Can't do that. Data recovery services, the world leader in professional in-lab data recovery services for damaged or inaccessible storage media. Where's ours? In English, press one. We're so frustrated right now. For technical, warranty, and pre-sale support. Press two to speak to a data recovery specialist. Press three. If you purchased a rescue plan and would like to prop to track your case, please visit seagate.com slash SRS tracker. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry.
shall we call and just talk to somebody else in like sales or something. If you could call in Seagate, you might get the case number or the serial number, please. Uh, that was last night, and we haven't received a phone call yet, so I tried calling and choosing the option to speak to a data recovery uh, service specialist. Uh, Shinora, I'd be happy to help you out with that. Just bear with me here. Um, if you don't mind, can I put you on a brief phone? Hello? 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 Is there any way to? Gotcha. Is there a way that they can call sooner? No. Well, that's frustrating because now we're stuck. There's no way to reach them. They're a black hole, and they will call you. Don't call <laughs> us. When I talked to the dude on the front end about how the process was going to work and everything we were talking through, every, all the details with data recovery with Seagate, the dude was great. Sounded very helpful, very professional. But now on the other side, this is just crap. Terrible. Come on, Seagate, fix this. There should be somebody to answer the phone. Seagate has still not called us back. And I just got a text message saying, hey, your media has been shipped. So they shipped our hard drive, dropped it off with FedEx or UPS, whoever it is. Without even talking to Why us. Why are you talking to us? They're just like, peace, we're done with it. Uh -uh. We don't no. want to do anything. Like, call us, people. Like, this recommendation with getting a Seagate recovering plan is probably not what we're going to stick with. We're probably going to look around for other places you can get a recovery plan from because this customer service is terrible right Unfortunately. Now. And I, mean, I hate to leave a bad review, but this is our experience. But it's how you manage the bad stuff that like sets you apart. Plus, there should be a way to always reach out to you. Like There are for these other companies we're looking at. There is no way to talk to somebody in the department that we can call them. Because all the information that we should be able to get when they do call us should be helpful for the next Sound like they're not even going to call us at this point. They're like, oh, they we're doing... They will call us. It's just they're doing it on their time. <laughs> what does our case number say now? Okay, so I have this web page that you can pull up to track your case. And I just hit refresh because I just got a text saying that they shipped it. And so then down below, I have a new note that says, this case is closed. For further questions, please contact us at... This phone number, which we've called, and every single time they just hang up, it doesn't do us any good, so I don't know what the point of that phone number is, or at this email, which I've emailed twice now and still not heard back. Come on, Seagate. This is so frustrating. Like, we just want to talk to a real person, find out what they tried, find out why it didn't work. Stinking talk to us. This is just me. Like, could they not even There's open no it at all? no communication. I don't know. We don't know. We don't know we anything. We do not know because they're not communicating with us. This is <laughs> not how you handle something this sensitive and this emotional. Anybody's data is going to be like this and this important. So to be like this and just giving text and email updates and like, hey, sorry it didn't work. We're shipping it back. And like, <laughs> oh, we'll call you, but jump. Oh, you can call for this number. Oh, just kidding. You really can't because when you call and it says forget you, hang up, goodbye. Thanks for calling us. <laughs> So yeah, somehow they left us a voicemail, so they did probably do this right before I got the text. And I don't know why, no, it's, I don't think, I think it went straight to voicemail. Um, it looks like they sent us an unsuccessful recovery due to media damage. We tried multiple head transplants. Um, I see your emails where you tried to call. 800 number is 800-475-0143. But again, uh, the surface area damage was too severe to be able to recover anything. Thank you. Okay, so so they did try replacing the uh, the heads several times. It sounds like they said that the damage on the discs was too severe. So, and what people have said is by us trying to plug it into our computer multiple times after we heard the clicking sound, that was scratching and bashing all the data to pieces. What they're saying is it's so bad, it's scratched, the discs are scratched up too much, and they can't recover the data because of how bad it's scratched. Because we plugged it in too much. Which sucks. We, are, we didn't know. <laughs> it's one of those things you don't know about until, I mean, I finally did research it and find it, and I took it to Best Buy, 
And I told them what was happening, but then he plugged it in and so he scratched it some more. And then, and then I wanted to try one more time because yeah. I hadn't heard it. And then Lisa's like, oh, well, I'll have a lucky touch. And so then she scratched it some more. So we apparently scratched it to pieces. It just seems crazy. There should, you would think, you would think that these things would be built better. It wasn't like we had it plugged in for hours like that. It was minutes. It was like a minute each time. Yeah. Like four minutes total. Seems kind of crazy. I don't know. I'll call these other guys to see what they say. We got our answer. We don't, I guess we don't really need to talk to them. No, anymore. we're done with them. Here's a challenge for all the engineers. Can you, or is there a hard drive that already exists that does this, where there's a fail safe, where as soon as that head breaks, it shuts down and stops spinning the discs or something so that it doesn't do any damage. So basically the only one that doesn't have like a spinning head like that is solid state. And a solid state hard drive for the size that we got we would have been about sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah. For one. And we each have a four terabyte hard drive. Versus like 160. So I mean you're talking ten times the cost. Yes. Would it have been worth it? Yeah, I guess, maybe, but I mean, this really sucks. <laughs> the other alternative would be to have another one of our spinning disk drives and then just have two copies of everything and just have that laying around. That would have been the better situation. That's what we should have done. Yeah, I just have two. Not. So I, actually, Learned that's what I'm doing state. right now is I'm here um, transferring onto Peter's. Um, so every like week now, this is what I'm doing. I, I, we should do it even every day, but I just... That's a lot to do, like, every day. Like, I have to dump it onto mine every day. Like, not dump it onto mine. And then Peter's. And, like, Peter's using his some of the time. So it, it does take time. Um, but that's honestly what we should have done, is to always have a second backup. But guess what? This didn't happen until we were doing a dang backup. Which, it's crazy. <laughs> it makes no sense. We didn't run a truck over it. We didn't do anything crazy. It was, it was sitting on a flat surface. On a, on a flat surface like this. They were... Transferring between the two, and it's like, okay, did one just, did that one just overheat and it just broke? But like, if it overheated again, there should be like some kind of a safety mechanism. Where like, oh hey, right. it's too hot. I'm gonna shut down and take a break for a while. I mean, like, I don't know. It's just crazy. Anyways, we don't know, um, and I don't know what I'm gonna do for videos. So, um, yeah, I, I, I really, I, we, blah, I want to try <laughs> to get it back. So as of right now, I think the plan is we're gonna try. One. I'm gonna call. And if two that doesn't places. work, try two. I'm gonna call two other places, see what they say. I'm gonna let them look at it. We're gonna, we're gonna. We obviously can't. You can't do any worse than. I mean, right now they say you can't ha get anything off of it, so you, you, we might as well ship it to a couple more people and. And they don't charge you anything options. until they get it off. <laughs> One thing I think is important to say is that, in a grand scheme of things. This is not that big no. a deal. Like we are throwing a fit, and it, some people may look at this and you know be like, "Oh, you guys just sound brats or whatever." I, anyway, <laughs> I mean it sucks, but yeah. the end of the day, we have still been able to enjoy an incredible trip, meet incredible people, see incredible places. We just have no pictures or videos of them Thankfully, for seventy-three days. I have a lot of pictures, but unfortunately, there's not a lot of pictures of us in the places or their people, and we don't have and because we because her. Camera was a whole lot better, so we used it for that. For the selfies. For the selfies. But, uh, I mean, the bottom line is we still have those friendships, still have those connections. We we were safe. We haven't had a serious injury. That would have been way more expensive. We didn't get killed anywhere. I mean, we didn't have anybody that, like, somebody could have stolen our bag with our hard drives. Right. And then you would have lost it anyway. Yeah. That, I mean, that yeah. hasn't happened. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we have to be grateful for. So, for it's sure. important to keep that in perspective, I think. Yeah. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, we were still able to see a lot of places. I mean, 50 years ago, people wouldn't have dreamed about bringing a camera and video vlogging this whole trip exactly. anyway. So, I mean, we still have the memories. We still, you know, the memories won't be as sharp if we can't review them. But, uh, <laughs> That's why I think I still, like, want to, like, make, like, a story timeline for, like, a group of days. And then, like, use Peter's pictures to kind of, like, fill in the gaps. And so that's kind of my idea of what we will probably do. But obviously it's not near the same no. because you're not getting the emotion and the feeling, you know, talking through what we're seeing, what we're experiencing. So it's not the same. It won't be any close to the same. And you don't see all the same stuff. Like, I mean, I didn't take pictures of a lot of the food that we ate or the restaurants and all this stuff or the places where we stayed. So, I mean, there's 
there's a lot that will be missing if we aren't able to recover this but we will keep trying hopefully yeah. hopefully hopefully and the good thing is that some of the backup to. did work and so it's not the entire like trip there's just this it's gap of this about gap, 73 days what percentage is that of the trip like a fourth section that's missing we could go back i mean it's some of the more affordable parts too i guess because we're missing from where in europe from serbia romania um so we don't have greece we don't have macedonia Santorini. greece uh we don't have your stinking we don't Santorini. have israel, we don't have israel. Is expensive, but we want to go back there anyway but we don't have um cyprus we don't have Malta, we don't have Tunisia, we don't have United Arab Emirates, or Egypt. India, Egypt, Which Egypt, Thailand. I think we can cover that pretty well with my pictures, honestly. We're not missing a whole lot there from the video. Egypt, we can pretty easily tell you in a story. So I think what we're going to have to do is just sit down and like... Rehash it. Go through rehash photos. it. So I think this it might be kind of fun. So um, it'll be like a video podcast almost instead. Yeah. It'll be as visual. We'll see. Hopefully, again, I'll we're not, we're not giving exciting. up hope yet. We're going to keep trying because... You might as well. Yeah. I mean, so I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that yet because I just don't feel like... We haven't explored all our options yet. I mean, no. There's still more people we can try. I feel like with computers, it's one of those things, if you find the right geek, you find the right person, they can figure it out. There's a way to do it. It's just a matter of finding that person that can do the impossible. So if, you know, the, if you know the right geek that is confident in fixing a four terabyte hard drive that has a clicking sound because of a broken head, please, please let us know in the comments. So again, this is not your average. Like typically when people have a hard drive failure, they're just talking about something with the software and it's super easy for the most part to recover, okay? So this is physical damage that's happened. So that the head broke. And it scratched the disc. So we're talking about, so Seagate re replaced that head several times apparently, um, but still was not able to read the disc. So that's what we're looking for. Somebody that can like repair those discs, I guess. I don't know. And be able to replace that head to where you can read and recover that data somehow. So, so if you have a good recommendation, please let us know. We're going to call two companies right now, figure out which one we're going to try first. And we'll let you know. We'll keep you updated. And we'll let you know. We'll keep you updated. Thanks for... Um, yeah, thanks for keeping me up with this. I This is not the news that you wanted to hear. This is not the news we wanted to hear, but this is the news. <laughs> drives that Seagate said, no, we can't recover, and you guys have been able to. Yeah, that happens quite often, actually. Really? Um, we'll so that was Gilware Data Recovery, which is who your mom's friend recommended. So this, they're estimating, would be 2,000, probably best case, 3,500 worst case. So it's a lot of money, but again, that... You know, we'll do a GoFundMe campaign. <laughs> I don't know. Who wants to see those memories on YouTube? Who wants to see the lost episodes of the Happy Hoppy Around the World trip? I don't know. So, and I call you guys and see if that's something that you guys have seen before. Well, what I can tell you, we definitely deal with uh, severely damaged drives. It would be anywhere from around $500 up to $2,300. Okay. Um, if the damage is incredibly extensive, it's possible it could exceed those figures. Uh, I think, for starters at least, we're going to try Gilware Data Recovery. The lady we spoke to there sounded more confident. More expensive, but we're not sure. It could be more. She gave a range, and the high end of the range was higher than the other company. Uh, the other company said that they are also one of the only ones in the world that will even attempt to recover a drive that has platter damage, which apparently ours does. So both of them sound like really good companies to go with, but the turnaround time with the secure data recovery was gonna be two to five weeks, whereas the turnaround time for Gilware, it, she said it is between four and eight business days. And the first two of those is the analysis and included in that. So the total time we're looking at is like two weeks. We're gonna try that because you know it's just faster, and then Lisa would possibly be able to start editing while we're still on the road. We'll see. Hopefully, Gilware will be able to do it. They sounded promising. Um, it's also super expensive. We'll see, yeah, it could be two thousand to thirty-five hundred dollars. Ouch! That is a lot of money. But if we, if they were able to recover 
those videos and those pictures, I mean, that's 73 days. That's like one-fourth of the trip. It'd be so worth it. I mean, it's expensive. You can get a car. You can get a used car for that much. But uh, Forget it. We'll just go around on bicycles when we get back. <laughs> serious. We'll walk and bike because we need our videos. <laughs> anyway, so that's where we're at. We are waiting. So right now, I haven't started the process yet because... There's really no point because we don't have the drive back in our possession yet. It's being shipped back to Lisa's parents in Pennsylvania. Once it gets to them, we'll go ahead and get this going, get it shipped out right away to Gilware in Wisconsin, it looks like. And hopefully, 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 they will be able to recover it. So we'll see.